Hello, hello. All right, Stephen Thomas, reports on housing. Quantitative economic decision sciences major from UC San Diego, 29 years in business, Orange County native, Capital Valley High School grad, nine kids, avid runner. These are my kids. I brought six, she brought two, I adopted her, she adopted mine. We have that guy. He's right now downstairs. He had an early nap because he's been getting up with the kids like at 6.30. It's been, uh, so he gets a little tired early. He actually asks us to put him to bed. <laughs> and we've been uh, in the press and our company's reports on housing. It's your local real estate snapshot. They just do, uh, you know, it's all about delivering uh, expectations of the real estate market locally. And uh, I don't really focus that much on closed sales data. That's because, you know, closed sales data is cool and all, uh, but it's a reflection of the past. I like to, I like to look at that, say, okay, what, what's, going, uh, what's going on now? Where are we headed right now? So what does the active listing inventory look like? That's supply and demand last three days with the pending sales. And from that, you get the true speed of the market. Supply and demand will give you that true speed. The true speed is something I came up with called expected market time. A lot of people rely on days on market. You could throw that stat out. It is not as accurate as expected market time. So expected market time will really give you the true flavor speed of the housing market. And I'm all about setting expectations. We have, uh, we have reports that dot all over Southern California. And uh, the most recent one that came out was powerful, strong, resilient. We have another one that's coming out on Monday and it's gonna be about appreciation for the rest of the year. So uh, stay tuned for that. That one comes out this week and that's for San Diego, Orange County, and Los Angeles. San Bernardino, San Bernardino and Riverside just got theirs this week, so uh, we alternate weeks. Reports on housing, R-E-P-O-R-T-S, on housing.com. It's your local real estate snapshot, and uh, you can subscribe by going to Reports on Housing, and it comes out every two weeks, like I said. Uh, there are actually two months where you get three reports because there is, it's every two weeks there are 26 reports, so you do the math. That's uh, t t twice we get three reports. It's $15 per month or $150 per year. And if you subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, coupon code is October, and because we are in the midst of October, right smack in the middle of October right now. And I'd like to uh, thank our sponsor. Our sponsor today is Escrow Junction. Uh, you can reach them at escrowjunction.com. They are, uh, their, their phone number is 760-245-1966. That's 760-245-1966. And they've been serving the high desert and surrounding areas with expertise since 1986. That was a junior in high school. So here they are from Adelanto, Apple Valley, Barstow, Hellendale, Hesperia, Oak Hill, Hills, Pinon Hills, Phelan, uh, Victorville, and Wrightwood. And you know, when working with an independent escrow uh, company, there is definitely a difference. So uh, what is that difference? Uh, escrow Junction, they're independently owned and operated. They're not broker owned or title owned. They truly are a neutral third party. And they have their escrow license, their bonding requirements in order to operate. It's a bit different than the others, and they're regulated by the Department of Business Oversight and uh, Department of Justice. And they do Department of Justice make investigation photos, fingerprints are required for all employees. Your funds are secure with Escrow Junction, and they specialize in everything from sales, refinance, mobile home escrows, new construction, new construction draws, vacant land sales, and 1031 tax exchange exchanges, and. Esco Junction has this incredible book for, uh, I believe this is the uh, volume two, second edition. So they've, they've been updating these and it gets you a just a load of information. I absolutely like it. I think everybody should have something like this in all uh, communities. And this is the uh, school district information, recreation, food, shopping, family and solo event, uh, uh, activities and events and just a whole bunch more. 411 uh, guy, let's see, he says, Groomers and dog parks for one one guide and so much more. So there's so much information uh, that that's packed in there. That's escrow junction. So fall fun photos, fall fun photos it is, and um, I've got a few great fun photos. Oh, come on over here. We've got one of our kids. They can't do their uh, jogathon. What is it called this year? Um, it's, it's dancing. It says dance off. You just dance for as long as you can and make some dough, right? 
careful dude. Go this man. is, this Go is, man. uh, what's your name again? Mason. Yeah. And what's your name again? Athena. Athena. Mason Edward, Athena Rose, everybody out there in Facebook Live land. We're ready for a weekend again. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. So here are some fall fun photos. It's such a pretty picture as she like shakes the, the, the uh, light. Come on, we got to make sure the lighting stays great there, uh, Athena Rose. So everything just got real now. Check this out. FedEx, USPS, and UPS. It's like they're all there. And I, I don't know if you've seen this, but I've actually seen this in my neighborhood where there's multiple bands running around at the same time. It's it's definitely different. We're we're seeing a lot more activity, a lot more delivery, that's for sure. Yeah, by the way, my wife and I we've noticed there's the last couple things. We actually went to Dick's Sporting Goods to get these uh these uh cleats that were too tight for our daughter that we got online at, at uh, Amazon, and they ended up being like $30 cheaper. So uh, not everything you get on Amazon uh, is, is the, the cheapest. So hey, I don't want to shop around. So anyway, it does exist. Men, 13 in one, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, mouthwash, deodorant, peanut butter, Gatorade, milk, tin foil, tennis shoes, dental floss, eye drops, plus five vitamins. This is describe a That's man. So cool. They just went in so easy. Men, 13 in one. <laughs> Coming soon, winter outdoor dining, 2020 style. You know what? This is why I absolutely love the fact that we live here in Southern California. We can't complain. Can you imagine this? No, I can't. Because the numbers are going up. They're going to be after closing down restaurants. And as it gets colder, who's going to want to go outdoor dining? Well, here in California, things are a little bit better. How about this one? Chia mask. <laughs> you know the chia pet? Come on, little beard. Isn't that funny? Ha. My kids. Ha. Got one biting its nails and the other one like rolling around on the carpet. Worst combo of 2020. Mask and unlocking your phone with your face. I've done this too. You have to actually enter in your code. Um, I, I guess we're going to have to like do it with your, with your mask on. I don't know if it allows it. I don't know, but that's the worst combo of 2020 is a mask and unlocking your phone with your face. I think that's great. The Southern California market. So we snapped the numbers again last night, and this is the one that's for Southern California that is accurate as of last night. So uh, here's the latest. And what season are we in? It's, remember, 2020 season. There's not really a season that we're in. I can't really describe the season. Next year in 2021, the way my forecast works is we will have normal seasons. This year, you can't figure out what season we're in. I, I really can't because uh, the numbers keep on fluctuating. So, uh, I don't know. We're just going to call it the season of 2020. And Southern California housing supply. Uh, this is where the inventory is. This is updated. Wow, that looks really flat. Not a lot of movement here, is there? Really, really flat. Normally, we do something like, it's very hard. We haven't had that many normals. That was 2018. And this is 2019. 2017 was a bit of more of a normal. There's a bit of an arc and it comes back. So right now, uh, we are we should be coming down in, in uh, the uh, listings inventory, but that's not what we're doing. Yesterday, we were at 26,002 homes on the market. It was up 2% in two weeks out of like 450 homes. Last year, we were at 41,690. And uh, that was up 60%. This is the purple line. Actually, the same period, it did go up last year at this, this time. And uh, so we'll have to see if this means that we're gonna go down after this. Uh, my guess is probably not. And I'll explain why in a minute. But uh, this is the difference between this year and last year. And this year, right now, it's the lowest level since 2013, as far as the inventory is concerned. But it's the lowest October since I've been tracking it. It's since 2012 for all of Southern California and Orange County it's since 2004. Come on over here. Oh my gosh, I've got a special guest for you. Oh, come on, just come over here. Uh oh, you get really quick. Everybody can hear you. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Hi. So, uh, what's your name? Uh, what's your name? Alana. Oh, last year, last week it was something else, remember? You said I asked you what your name was. Oh, it was a. Uh, like Joe or something, and make a or, or something. Yes. So, are you having a good day? Yeah. 
Hey, you, is Nana coming over to see you? Yeah. You want to see Nana? Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Say hi to everybody. Hi. <laughs> see, he's warmed up. He's a little shy at first. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's it. Go ahead and watch. <laughs> so it's the lowest October, and as far as the uh, active inventory is concerned, I have there's two different things that are going to play out in these next few weeks because the the market from uh, a month from now is definitely the active listing inventory is going to fall. It's absolutely going to fall, and it always does. It falls once we hit right around Thanksgiving, about the week before. So four weeks from now, for sure, we're going to do it. So, but where are we going to go from here? There is, I actually think there's a strong possibility that we rise a little bit. This is not typical. We did it in 2018 because of 5% interest rates, but that's not why the inventory is going up because we really have a high demand. And the reason for it is because we're actually adding more homes on the market right now than we normally do at this time of the year, especially uh, Orange County. Second is Los Angeles, third is Riverside County, fourth is San Diego, and San Bernardino finally is adding more homes than the prior year. But uh, Orange County is adding them at such a clip that at the, by the time it gets to the end of the year, they may have put on more homes in 2020 than 2019. And that is like uh, not that many markets in, in throughout uh, uh, the state of California have, have achieved that, where there's actually more homes that came on the market. But this is where it's, uh, I think it's most likely gonna go and then go down. But we're gonna find out within these next two weeks because there is a possibility that a bunch of people go, yeah, we're getting too long and tooth in the, in the year and they start to pull their homes off the market. Not as many homes coming on the market and then we start to come down and then we get homes that pull their homes off the market because there's a lot that have been on the market for more than 60 days and they'll throw in the towel. Yes, there are people that are out there that, that fit that bill and when they do that, the inventory will fall further. So uh, that's, that's in thanks, Thanksgiving on. So, but the number of new for sale signs in SoCal compared to 2019, this is comparing each month, month to month, compared to 2019, the same month. So in 2020 versus 2019 in March, we placed 21% fewer homes in the market this year. In April, it was 45%. In May, it was down 26%. In June, it was down 11%. And uh, in July, it's down 1%. Uh, just a second, I'm about to get to the best part, but I have a really quick dad moment. Hey, buddy, stop chewing your nails. <laughs> I love you like crazy. <laughs> July is down 1%, and August up 3%, and uh, that was our dog, Luna. September is up uh, 10%. So uh, September, like off the charts, it was up 10%. That's a lot of extra homes. And right now, at the clip that it's going, uh, October looks like it's gonna be even more. Uh, I did uh, I did a little snapshot on LA showed, showed the, the most right now, and it's up like 14% for those first couple weeks of October, so unusual. And what is going on is the market is saying, come on, list, come on, come on the market right now. Please, come on the market, because across the United States, you are hard pressed to find a negative real estate article. I can't really find one. Why? Because the market is moving at a very rapid, strong rate right now. So I'm hard pressed to find uh, negative uh, articles that are out there. As a result, with all the PR that's going on and how incredibly wonderful the real estate market is, it's enticing people to place their homes on the market that may not have during this time of the year. And it's that hot right now that it's, it's encouraging a lot of people coming on the market. So uh, Southern California housing demand year over year, this is where we're at, and if you see, uh, yesterday it was 20,447. It actually went up. There's a slight incline here. Not much, uh, but up a half a percent in two weeks. Still, this is typically when you're coming down. There are some months where, it, years where it goes up. This was 2017. It went up like crazy. And this was a, for sure, really strong October housing fest, but we already have extremely strong demand. So if you're comparing what it's did, what it did in these months compared to uh, th this month this year, you really can't because this is already elevated like crazy. We already have totally juiced demand. It's almost hard to get that extra juice going uh, because we we uh, don't quite have the inventory that we had back then. Last year we were at fifteen thousand six hundred and fifty. That was twenty three percent less than where we're at right now. And it's the best demand reading right now, this, this 
period since 2013. The best demand reading. And it's the strongest October since I started tracking this thing back in 2012. That's how strong the, the uh, demand is right now. So um, I told you it's kind of like October housing fest because we're getting this increase in demand and that's typical because uh, that is when we have a lot of closings in December. I can already see that with the numbers that the, the month of December will have more closings than the month of November. That's just uh, because of the increased uh, volume of pending sales right now. And we'll see it, it, how juiced it is depends upon what happens over the course of the next couple of weeks. And as far as the expected market time, this is where we're at. Expected market time is when you're below 60 days, it's a hot seller's market. This is how far we are. Even it's a buyer, it's a seller's market below 90, which is way up here. So you can see how much room we have. Yesterday was at 38 days. In the 30s is ridiculous. That's flaming hot right here. So it's it, it actually changed zero over the, the course of the last two weeks. And then uh, it's at 80 days last year, so 38 to 80 days. And this is the difference between this year and last year, just as huge. We, we expect a market time. The lower the expected market time, the hotter the market. And the way I look at it is it's the speed of the market. We are at an incredible speed right now. It's like going 130 miles per hour up or down the I-5 freeway. It's too fast for my liking, period. And uh, I like I like a speed of around you know 78 five seven you know 78 miles per hour. That's good on the freeway. Don't tell a cop. But that's that's flowing, and that's like a slight seller's market. But when we're going at 120 miles per hour, that is fast. That is a hot seller's market. Too hot for my liking. And it's a concern of buying going forward. Not currently right now, but could be. Expect a market time where this little trough is. Even draw a line across still the lowest level since uh, tracking in 2012. August and September, lowest levels. So that's just where we're at, August, September, October. Um, home values are on the rise. And it's all a supply and demand issue. It's this. It's this Cabbage Patch doll. I remember when my dad was trying to find a Cabbage Patch doll for my sister. We couldn't find one. We finally found one and in the park, parking lot, I think it was of a Jimco, date, that dates me, but the, in the parking lot, somebody offered my dad cash for the Cabbage Patch doll. My dad said no because my, my sister really wanted said Cabbage Patch doll. But this thing, it was it, it, there was such a small supply of them and demand was so high that, that people were willing to pay you in the parking lot. And I've actually heard homeowners have said that people knocked on their doors saying, hey, if you're interested in selling your home, I want to live here. So that's how hot the market is. This, it's all due to interest rates and interest rates, I'm happy to report again, 2.81% is where we were as of, uh, as of uh, yesterday. This is, I, I get up like at five in the morning so I can see what this is. This is Freddie Max. Uh, weekly market survey that they do of mortgage uh, entities across the United States. They've been doing it for 49 years. They're about to hit their 50th year mark, and this is the lowest ever. It is now this 2.81%. It is the 10th record low this year since March. That tells you how incredibly hot the market is because of how incredibly hot the interest rates are. It's motivating a lot of people to purchase. And if you look, people are stretching, buyers are stretching to purchase. And I wanted to get into why they're, they're willing to actually stretch a bit to purchase. It's because of these lower interest rates. They're, you, you can kind of like do the math. And low interest rate environment, if you look at this, this is for a $700,000 house, you're looking at a current rate of 2,876 versus 3758. This is when it was 5%. This is a savings of, and this is at 2.8%, $882 per month, $10,000 per year. And if you take a look at this, this is prior to the Great Recession, 6.35%. That was a great rate in, in uh, history of time. And if you look at the 700,000, the difference in payments between here and here is $1,480 per month, which is nearly 18 grand. You wonder why people are lining up and they can't wait to purchase something. And that's with these interest rates. They are incredibly low. 
I did the same thing. You're going to see this wavy thing. Made a little error in, 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 in the uh, slide difference. But so buyers, as a result, are willing to stretch a little bit, and I'll show you what that looks like. This is what stretching looks like. If you have that first offer at 500,000 and you put 20% down, I'm just doing this. You can put 10% down, by the way. You can put 5% uh, down. You could do 3.5% down if you're FHA, by the way. There's a lot of different scenarios, but that changes things a little bit. But I'm just going to, for the ease of uh, this, I'm doing a 20% down uh, example, but you can do less. Millennials need to understand this. I think it's. Uh, there are exactly 3.5% of all millennials that know that you can put 3.5% down. That's my saying I like to say. Why do I say that? Because not everybody, if you ask them how much down they think they, they, they need, they think they all need 20%. But for this example, I did 20%. And this is 500000 a $400,000 loan, the down payment, this is the first offer, payment at 2.8% is $1,644 per month. You know what, 5%, that was $2,147 per month. That's an extra $503 every single month. I just threw that out there for fun. First offer, we talked about that. Now you gotta do a new offer because there's so many people that are that are purchasing this, this house and this house was listed at 500, you thought you were getting it at 500, but there's just so many people that are willing to purchase it. So somebody's bringing in an offer at $510,000 with 20% down and look, now your down payment is $2,000 more and this is your loan and your loan goes up by what? just $32 per month. That's the difference between here and here. That's it, $32 per month. Skip Starbucks a couple times and you've paid $32 extra per month. That's why people are willing to stretch from five to 510. How about if they've got to stretch all the way to 525, somebody brings in that offer at 525 and at 20% down, they're looking at 105,000. Now the loan is 420,000, it's 1,726. So the difference in point payments is only $82 extra per month. And when you do your budget and you do your family budget, you can kind of figure out, hey, I can do that extra $82. And this is why people are willing to stretch with so many people because these rates are so low. I told you the difference between now and 5% is over $500 for this example alone. And we're looking at just a $400,000 loan too. So 5% is uh, $108 extra per month versus this is only $80 extra per month. So when you actually are going up in percent in, in, in dollars, as far as your uh, per offer and the loan amount, the uh, difference in extra per month is less because the interest rate's less. This interest rate is more, 5%, you actually end up having to pay more by virtue of just the interest rate. So I wanted to point that out. Let's do another example at 750,000 with 20% down. Remember, you can do less. Uh, that's $2,465 per month. At 5%, it's 3221. That's $756 per month more. $756 is a lot of money. If you could do a second offer and you're at 760, so you went up only by $10,000, now you're only paying an extra $33 extra per month. That's not that big of a difference. Like I said, that's why people are willing to stretch that uh, that, that property that's listed at 750. I'll go 760. And you know what? Maybe I'll even go 775. That's an extra $25,000 above that 750. And this is why we're seeing this kind of movement because $2,548 per month is only an extra $83 extra per month. For the, uh, remember, this is it's $108 extra per month for the uh, for a 5% uh, mortgage versus the 2.8%. So you can see, you're, it's just, it's the same amount, even in the higher ranges. So that's why you're seeing this, this willingness to go from 750 to 775 uh, and or the 500 to 525. I've just give, given you the example and when you see how much you're saving on a monthly basis, which is a tremendous amount, remember, oops, I talked about it and it is $756 per month. That's such a big savings that for to stretch a little bit, you're looking at only $83 extra per month to go up 25 grand. So you can see that when you do all the math and show what it looked like at, at 5% versus what it's at 2.8%, you were gonna pay an extra $750 per month, but now just to pay $25,000 more, it's only $83 extra per month, you're still getting a rocking deal at paying an extra $25,000 and this is why people are stretching. I'm showing you this because this is what is going on in the marketplace right now today. So that is why buyers are willing to stretch. And uh, 
As a result, demand is really high and we have bidding wars. Bidding wars are here and it doesn't look like it's going to change even in 2021. Uh, I've seen different forecasts that are out there. Um, mine is continue uh, to roll at a very, very rapid rate down, uh, up and down the I-5 freeway. So at too fast of a speed for 2021. This could change later on in the year, but for that first half of 2021, it is going to be hot. So coronavirus, let's talk about it because as the, goes the coronavirus, as goes the economy. And this is the world. Something is changing. Something is a brew for uh, COVID right now. And this is what's going on. There's 39 million cases now around the world and 343,000 on average the, for the last seven days, the number of new cases per day. And this is going up. We hit this plateau here at, uh, it was like 70 some thousand. Then we hit this plateau over here at 250,000 and now it's continuing to rock up right now. And uh, I wanna show you this and let's focus on Europe because something's happening in Europe. I don't know if you've seen this, but Europe for the first day ever, if you adjust to a population yesterday, actually has more cases uh, per capita. And uh, I'll explain that in a second, but Europe's, this is travel on tourism. They were down 66%. Everybody's way down, but let's focus on Europe. They're down 66%. Their economy is heavily, they heavily rely on travel. And because of that, you can see these are all the countries around the world, 41% of the Americas and 61% of Asia. Only 17% of Europe has travel restrictions, even though we're in the midst of a, of a pandemic. Because of this re relaxing of the travel, uh, because they totally had COVID down, but they allowed people to travel over their summer months. And what happened? This is what happened. This was the first wave. This is the second wave in, in uh, the European Union. So the EU, 3.87 million cases right now, still not as many as we have. 80,000 cases per day is the seven day uh, moving average. And if you look at the EU and the United States, uh, this is, this, they, they have a lot more than we do uh, right now, and they were doing a lot better. But understand this, we have to adjust it according to population. When you adjust it according to population, they have 446 million uh, citizens, we have 328 million. So when you adjust it, it looks like this. This is where uh, a couple days ago, you could see they were, they were actually less, and now they're more, and now they're even more, because they are really uh, getting out of hand. The United States is not in, a, in, in the best uh, spot either. And I follow this, remember, I'm following this because if, if, it, if it starts to spike up here again, and, and it's in other states, we're gonna see it affect uh, everything. This, this ripple effect with, with uh, continued measures, and we have more people that go unemployed. Initial unemployment claims continue to rock at a higher level. So uh, we're at 8 million cases total for the United States, and we're at 53,500 cases on average for the last seven days. If you've been keeping track, if you go back, if you have some debriefs, we were way over here uh, a few weeks ago, uh, and it was a lot less. Now it's at uh, almost August 15th uh, levels, and uh, 64,000 uh, cases were reported yesterday. So that's just something to understand. So this is going to continue to go up with the seven day moving average. And where are the COVID cases happening? It's like middle America is having a problem. So is Florida. And the reason Florida is having a problem and Texas and California have kind of plateaued is because Florida relaxed their restrictions totally. They said no more masks, you could go to bars, you could do all this different stuff. We're tired of it. And I understand, we all do. Coronavirus fatigue and political fatigue, the two of those together combined, it's like a one-two punch. So uh, I get that. However, when you relax too much, this is what happens. You start to get a spike in, in, in uh, COVID cases and COVID-19 test results per day. As a result, we were hitting, getting towards that 5%. We actually want to be at 3%, but we we're finally getting to 5%. And now it's turning around and going the wrong direction. We're at 6.9% positivity rate again. And we need to do a lot more tests. I understood that we were supposed to do over a million with this uh, this short test, this really fast test that they were supposed to have, and that was supposed to be a month ago. St still, don't, or we just hit a million a couple times. We need to be about 1.5 million tests in order to pro properly contract trace and all that stuff. California, you can see we've been in our best behavior. It's been kind of flat. 868,000 cases total, 3,300 on average. That yeah, was way better than back in the day when we were reaching almost 10,000 cases per day for California. And we have this, these, this new, uh, this is not so new now, now it's like a six weeks old, but still I've been following this and they keep changing. 
they changed it and then now they're changing this thing again these are tiers and this is the new change the new format and the, the uh, positivity rates stayed the same and this actually improved slightly but here's what the big change is and I didn't, haven't shown you this before because there's different metrics in order to get to these different stages. We're gonna, Orange County is going to be stuck in red. Uh, San Bernardino is going to be, and LA is going to be stuck in purple. And I don't think anybody in Southern California is going to make it in here because of this health equity metric. What they do is they follow the, the bottom 25% tier as far as income and uh, population. So they're, they're uh, targeting different areas that are having a, a problem with the pandemic and their positivity rates too high. So they're testing positivity rates too high in certain areas. They want counties to take care of those certain areas and make sure that you take care of all of your all of your citizens in the county, not just the majority of the citizens. So they're trying to uh, target the, the areas that have been getting hit hardest. And these reopening tiers, so this shows you where we're at. Uh, Riverside County is in a battle with the state of California right now. They really should be in Burgundy because they've been here for two weeks. They're having a fight. If, they ha if they're Burgundy next week again, as far as this metric is concerned, they are going to go back to Burgundy. And that means that they can't have in inside restaurant dining 25% capacity, things like that. They, they'll go backwards in their restrictions. Nobody is improving. And a lot of it has to do with this health metric, but even here we haven't seen much improvement. That's because we're going into the fall and then soon into the winter. Anyways, uh, macroeconomic outlook, a unemployment, uh, this is kind of plateaued and it's not gonna get much better until we have a vaccine that is rolled out and we start to see unemployment fall and we start to see sectors of the economy that have been really hurt come back online. That'd be like hotel, that would be like airlines, that it's also it's all travel, it's entertainment, it's, it's uh, box offices. Uh, we had Regal Cinemas open up here in Orange County and they closed it down again because there's no blockbusters, that type of thing. And where is all the unemployment? The younger people is where it's affected. The less educated is, is affected, higher unemployment rates. And then this is the, the tier where you come off and the more unemployed. The bottom wage earners are the ones that are getting most affected. That really affects a lot of uh, tenants and not necessarily as many homeowners. But speaking of homeowners, forbearance dropped from 6.81% to 6.32%. That's now at 3.2 million people in forbearance. That's still a lot. However, it was at 4.3 million in June, so we've already shed over uh, 1 million, so 1.1 million people total uh, come out of forbearance. And uh, uh, the vast, vast majority of them are actually paying on time. Uh, so the people that are coming out are actually doing quite well is what the analysis has been so far. So mortgage uh, purchase applications from uh, from MBA, that's the uh, Mortgage Bankers Association, up 24% year over year is 21 weeks of year over year gains. Absolutely incredible. And consumer confidence is absolutely surging. If you see this bump right here, this bump right here was the largest month over month gain in 17 years. So just understand that consumer confidence is beginning to return. If you draw a line across, boop, 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 we're actually at like 2016 levels as far as consumer confidence is concerned. So we've come a long way since it went really down and that was back towards like 2014 levels. So we've already improved quite a bit. Stephen Thomas with the Reports on Housing and you can go to reportsonhousing.com to subscribe. That is a wrap. We get a month free if you use the coupon code October. And uh, I want to thank escrowjunction.com for being a sponsor for the last few weeks. They serve the high desert and the surrounding areas. You can reach for the uh, escrow junction is the name of the company. You can go to escrowjunction.com, 760-245-1966. That's 760 245 And when we're with an independent escrow company, uh, escrow company, there is a difference. And there's plenty of reasons to go to uh, escrow junction. I mean, they have all the correct oversight. They have all the correct investigations. They're properly bonded and licensed, and they've been independently owned and operated. They've been around since 1986, and they've got this, uh, they specialize in everything from sales to 1031 to tax exchange, everything's in between, and they have this awesome book this exploring the high, the high desert. Such a cool idea. I actually think this is phenomenal. So you can, you can go to their uh, website to get the ejhomestown.com and slash hd-guide and you can see it yourself. 
So that's it. That's all I have. And I did pretty good. 336, pretty darn good. Oh, oh my gosh. I have here a special prince that wants to say goodbye to everybody. Come here, special prince. No, Come here. He's a fairy, oh, he's fairy godfather. Oh, he's a fairy godfather. Come here, fairy godfather. I want you to, to no, cast a spell no, upon the audience. Here's Ziki. Come here, Ziki. Dance over here. I wish you could see this. He's actually dancing in front of me. You can come over here. So Nana's going to be over here. That's Alana's nickname, Nana. Come here. Come here, little guy. No. One last thing. No, Go grab him. Just grab him. Go grab him. <laughs> yes, anyways. I just want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you very much. You can't see uh, Ziki, the fairy godfather, because he's busy hopping on the other side here. I turned the camera around, but I have a couple of cameras. I have a YouTube camera besides the Facebook Live bow, camera. So, bow, 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 so bow, I can bow. do it. Can oh, hey. <laughs> but anyways, we uh, I appreciate everybody being here. We'll see you on the other side. Have a fantastic weekend. and. Uh, Thank you again, Escrow Junction, for uh, for your sponsorship, and Mama, we'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Uh -huh.